Also tonight, Roger Stone walking out of federal court as a guilty man. A jury found him guilty on seven charges, including obstruction, lying to Congress, and witness tampering. He could face decades in prison. Local 10 News reporter Glenna Milberg is working this one live in Fort Lauderdale. Glenna. Nicole, this is where the Roger Stone case spectacle started in January. You may remember the raid on his then home is where he was arrested. Tonight, Roger Stone is the latest of President Trump's closest confidants to be a convicted criminal. Donald Trump's former advisor and longtime ally Roger Stone found guilty Friday on all seven charges he was facing including obstruction, witness tampering, and lying to the same committee currently holding public impeachment hearings into the U.S. president. A jury convicting the 67-year-old of charges arising from former special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. election. Roger Stone did nothing wrong. We love you, Roger. Stone denied wrongdoing and slammed the case against him as politically motivated. The self-proclaimed dirty trickster, a fixture in Republican politics, has worked on campaigns stretching back to Richard Nixon's. The court heard from prosecutors that Stone told lawmakers lies related to WikiLeaks and his efforts to learn more about when the site would publish damaging emails about Trump's 2016 Democratic opponent, Hillary Clinton. Roger Stone found guilty on all counts. How might that affect things for the president? Give us a little bit of uh, insight into Roger Stone and, and what happens next. Well, if you're not familiar with Roger Stone, he is he proudly describes himself a master of the dark arts. He came from the Nixon era uh, and he was an associate with President Trump. There were suggestions that Roger Stone has denied that he has links with WikiLeaks. You go back to the 2016 election when that big WikiLeaks dump of the stolen emails from the DNC were made public, uh, which really helped propel Donald Trump's uh, attacks against Clinton, which ultimately led him to victory. Uh, Stone, now guilty on seven counts, including lying to Congress uh, and other charges. The, the thing is, though, these are federal charges. So Possibly Trump could pardon him. There's no talk about that, but that is an avenue that the president could go. It's an, uh, it's an avenue the president can go. Uh, it is not a good day for Donald Trump. He's injected himself uh, into an uh, into an order, into the impeachment inquiry against him, and then one of his another one of his confidence goes down uh, mm -hmm. in court. So uh, again. Really bad day for President Trump. Yeah, we know you'll keep an eye on it for us from uh, that location. Richard Madden in Washington for us. Moments after the verdict, the president tweeted, quote, so they now convict Roger Stone of lying and want to jail him for many years to come. The president then referenced Hillary Clinton, James Comey, and a list of others accusing them of lying. Spencer Shu of The Washington Post covered the trial, and he joins me here now. Welcome to the News Hour. Thanks very much. So uh, Stone is found guilty of obstructing that congressional investigation that we listed there. In what ways did prosecutors say he obstructed that investigation? What did he do? Well, jurors found that uh, he lied in five different ways, um, denying that he had a back channel or an intermediary uh, with WikiLeaks from whom he sought information that he did not um, have any records of any communications uh, uh, with those, uh, any such individuals. Um, he falsely named one person as a source of information, and then he proceeded uh, to um, threaten uh, that witness and uh, direct him to lie or to uh, mislead or not cooperate with the committee. Um, and he also denied communicating with the Trump campaign about this intermediary or his efforts. Um, and then finally, he denied any communications with third parties about his, about uh, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, you know, the man who was holed up at the Ecuadorian embassy uh, since 2012, who was uh, tweeting and, and, and making comments about the emails. In other news today, Roger Stone, the former aide and longtime confidant of President Trump, today was found guilty in a federal court on seven felony counts, among them obstructing a congressional investigation into Russia's interference in the 2016 election. Stone was also convicted of lying to investigators and tampering with a witness. Prosecutors said that Stone committed these crimes to protect the president. Amna Nawaz has the details. 
That's right, Judy. In fact, the panel that Stone lied to is the same congressional committee that's conducting the impeachment hearings. Now, Stone's indictment was the last brought by former special counsel Robert Mueller. And the trial revealed new details about the Trump campaign's interest in emails hacked by Russia and published by WikiLeaks. There was a lot of sort of circus to this trial itself. What was it like over the course of this trial? And also, a lot of people are asking, what's the possibility the president now just pardons Roger Stone? Um, you know, there had been some question of why this case had gone to trial. It was a very strong uh, uh, paper uh, records case. You know, um, prosecutors had said that's the beauty of this thing. So much, was, you know, papers don't lie. And they had, you know, 1,500 texts and email messages that he, uh, that Stone had claimed didn't exist. Um, and the thought had been that it, uh, that Stone was really not just uh, appealing to a jury of 12, but maybe an audience of one. That he'd used this uh, case to attack the Mueller prosecution and 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 and, and accuse of, a, of being a witch hunt, um, and and you saw that uh, I don't know that Stone now can come to a jury and, and say that he accepts responsibility now that the president um, has come out and said that uh, you know it's a double standard. Maybe he shouldn't have been prosecuted. We'll see what p approach he takes facing potentially a prison term. We'll wait to see. Indeed, Spencer Shu of the Washington Post. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Roger Stone leaves the D.C. courthouse a convicted criminal, the latest of President Trump's confidants guilty, lying to Congress, witness tampering and obstruction. The latest chapter of the Stone spectacle began with a pre-dawn raid last January at the Fort Lauderdale home he'd been renting. Indicted hours later, he emerged on the steps of the Broward Federal Court as part of the narrative of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. I believe this is a politically motivated investigation. Throughout the week-long trial in Washington, D.C., prosecutors used Stone's own text messages and emails to build the case that he, as the president's longtime friend and advisor, acted as a go-between, connecting his his 2016 campaign with WikiLeaks dump of hacked and eventually damaging Democratic emails and then lying to Congress about what he had and what he said. Stone's lawyers called no witnesses and he himself did not testify. President Trump weighed in on the verdict on Twitter. What about crooked Hillary and a list of his nemeses, he said, calling the conviction a double standard. Prosecutors had asked that Stone be in custody until his sentencing. The judge declined that request, and so tonight Stone is free. He will have to surrender for his sentencing hearing, which is now scheduled for the beginning of February. I'm Glenna Milberg, live in Fort Lauderdale tonight, Local 10 News.
Stone is the latest in a string of former Trump aides and officials who have now been convicted. They include Michael Cohen, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, George Papadopoulos, and Michael Flynn. Stone is now the latest member of Trump's circle to be convicted, joining the list that includes Paul Manafort, Michael Cohen, and Michael Flynn. Shortly after the verdict was announced, Trump tweeting a double standard, then listing a slew of his political rivals, suggesting they are more worthy of jail time. Sentencing for Stone, by the way, is set for February 6th.